Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. My horses are getting older, so I'm doing less. But I don't own a drill to put behind the tractor, so I see with the horses. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I drag with the horses. I drag the manure because we haul manure out in the hay fields out here, and I drag all them. You with plow with the tractor? We plow with the tractors. We uh, when Jeremy and I were doing a lot of horse pulling, then we plowed a lot with the horse mm -hmm. because we, that's how we kept our horses in shape. Right. We just plow them. First one was a gray mare, and I had a roan Belgian mare. They were the two mares that I bought. A one come from Comstock's down the road here, and that was when we first got married. So that was I was probably twenty. Um, that's when I first got draft horses. I drove quarter horses and welts, and I drove them and rode them. You spread manure with them, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would say put it every day, you know, uh -huh. clean the barn every day. Yep. You clean the barn with a skid steer then? I have a skid steer, but it broke down. But the barn, it's the easiest just with the wheelbarrow. Okay, so you did it by hand. You've seen it sitting there. Yep. The wheelbarrow is sitting by the manure spread, and I'm, now my son usually comes over this time in the evening. Well, and then my son in law comes in the morning. That manure, that wheelbarrow is always full of manure. So then when they come, we just pick it up and dump it in the manure spread. So, sure. Horses hauling out. He had never driven horses unless if you haven't had a runaway. Uh, anybody that says they've never had a runaway. Now I got one guy over here that says he's never had a runaway, Robert Brickman. And he's driven horses, but they're all ponies. And he used to race them, ponies on the tracks. And they weren't even drivable, them things. Right. You know, <laughs> so he'd been around the rough stuff. And, right. But he, he, said, he says to this day, and he's 84 now, that he's never had a runaway. And I says, Robert, yes, you had a runaway. I said, what about the time that you were using your cart breaking that horse, that collar was supposed to go on, Rocky, <coughs> and you went bouncing across the field on your butt, and he, he had, his feet were still in the chariot, and his reins, hands were still on the reins, but his butt was bouncing on the ground <laughs> across the field. <laughs> he couldn't stand to walk for weeks afterwards. <laughs> he says, yeah, but I stopped him. I didn't have a runaway. Well, okay, you're right. <laughs> but everybody's had a runaway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just hope it isn't that bad one. And these are the two I was telling you that were born one hour apart out here. Oh, okay, sure. So I, I raised these two. What's their names? Uh, Belle and Beauty. Yeah. And that's another thing you will you'll hear today. You didn't mention it yesterday. We didn't talk to names of horses. Right. But uh, they're all... That's Buck and Buster, that's Bell and Beauty, that's Blake and Bo, that's Bob and Blackie. They all start with a B. Don't I give me any, Dustin. Wait till uh, noon. Yeah. Now you tell me that. Yeah, wait till noon. Yeah, so they all start with a B. How come? That got started with the first ones. And you just kept it up? Uh, yeah. Ben and Candy, but Candy was a C, but, and Candy is the grandmother to these two. That was my first Pertron out of Chief Layette, and that's the grandmother to these two. They're a little chunky now because they haven't been used. I get these two downs quite a bit thinner, and then they uh, they just go all day. They're the kind of, they can beat the highway, and their legs don't get sore. You know, that's right. 25 miles on the highway. and.
peel we're going to see this morning now. Uh huh. So that. Uh, and, and I had it pretty dry, so I don't think it's that much frost out here. It'd only be in the other end. There's a little lower spot. There might be a little bit of frost. I don't think. It's not going to take as long. Yep. <laughs> These two travel like this uh, 30 miles a day. Really? Yeah. They're happy. Yeah. They're you can always, tell they're enjoying it. The ears are up and they're always, they're a little heavy now. It's 12 miles up to a, a, a state campground uh -huh. through the forest up here. Yep. And we start with, I'll do it like six miles and then me and Lauren will take a half hour break or so. Uh -huh. And then we'll go the last six miles. And we usually do it in about four or five hours. Uh, to get them 12 miles, so it, it doesn't take that long. But in the spring of the year, we'll make two or three trips up there. Uh, maybe go on a Friday at noon and come back. We're usually home by uh, Saturday noon or one o'clock. And each trip is 24 miles, and, and you do about three trips, and then they're doing good. You know, they they'll get their exercise and they get their legs built up. Yeah, yeah, and you bet you do. You don't have any lights on it, do you? I didn't see no, any lights. It's all uh, red uh, for our clearance lights, you know. Uh -huh. But yeah. I, I don't drive go anywhere in the dark. Yep. Easy to do because now I have a 12 volt battery to run my player. Sure. You know, so I could put lights on. Yep. The chains that you've got on your brakes, does that give you a better grip? I was down in the Gondick Gully area and what I found on gravel and dirt roads, the tires come up with sand on them. Okay. And the brakes did nothing. I couldn't Cause it, push hard Because it wouldn't, okay, because yeah. it would make them slippery. So it would it make... It just slagged, yeah. Would, yeah, okay. I, I just, I get up and stand on that brake and, and yeah. it wasn't enough. Yeah. So, one day I was just sitting along the road and I had that little piece of chain with me. The reason I had it with because that's the same chain that, that holds up my... Uh, table that I made for the wife. Okay. So I had a piece of chain with and I had a file to cut it off. So I filed the chain thing and I cut it off. And then they then we uh I wrapped them around there and I just tied them with wire. Yeah. And it really made a difference. I bet. So now I'm gonna take them off and I'm gonna just gonna take welder and weld beads on it. Okay, sure. Rough to make a grip. Yep. 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 I don't need a lot of brakes in this country, but sometimes it, them two there, they'll hold back this wagon until it, uh, them bridges are stuck right in their butt. <laughs> sure. I mean, they're really good. They'll sit right down trying to hold that. Sure. Uh, it, but don't hurt to help them. Yeah, help them out. Because they are light. They're, you know, the horses aren't yes. making. And if you get this all loaded up, especially with people in it and everything, there's some weight. Yeah. I don't fill that water tank. I, I found out I didn't need it. Right. But that's what fits underneath my bed, so I, I put as big as what would fit. Well, yeah, then you got it I when do you need do need it. it. Yeah. yeah. Right. I hook different than a lot of people do. Um, I don't hook bit to bit. I hook bit to hang. Right. 
crossing in front. Right. That's what I use. Now, if your horses aren't used to that, you can end up with your horses, your two center ones getting too far ahead, and right. one's back, or vice versa. You don't have the control of the horse. You don't have control of it. You right. don't, like you do with bit to bit or jockey sticks or there's you know many different ways to do it now I have done this many times but I drive four all the time you know we when we seed we cultivate we do whatever you do in the field it's always four wide so our horses are all used to that Middle on him? Yeah. No matter who does it, we've all done it so many times that we know what to look for. Right. G boy. G. 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 We go down the driveway. G. All right, so what kind of advice would you give somebody that wants to get into horses? I think the, the, the biggest advice I give them is, well, if they're broke, they get, they're already got a broke, but now they, the people need to be broke. But equipment, equipment is number one. And I started out with no money, and I had to use uh, uh, old harnesses that I could buy at an auction sale for $5 or $10, you know, you buy a whole pile. And so I went down that road, and I broke all that stuff and had to fix it. and. Uh, of course, I showed you how I had to fix it, but you know nowadays uh, People have a little more money if they're gonna play with some horses or something. They usually got a little bit of money they can spend but number one bridles Bridles are number one have the best bridle you can put on it. Don't get not something that's gonna maybe break And, and the bridles and reins because that's your steering wheel. That's your control. So that's number one what I tell a lot of people um, Just a couple here that's doing these here um, he's got one harness that was pretty good, but I said, I can get you a decent set of harnesses at Waverly. And I bought him a nice set of harness. A little bit big, they had to be, they were for halflingers, and their horses were a little bit smaller. So I, I got to fit him down. The reason I had to put pads in the collar, because they need a collar that's two inches smaller. Them are 17, they need 15, but the Hames didn't fit on the 15 inch collar. So I says, let's go to 17 inch collar, put a pad in there, now our Hames are going to fit. And the harnesses have wood hames collars or hames on them, and they've all been stained. Uh, so that's the wood grain, really nice looking. And he didn't want to part with them. It was sure. brass knobs. Sure. Um, so it's all brass hardware on his harnesses, and he wants to keep that. So I says, you're gonna have to spend a couple more dollars and buy nice collars. And there's nothing wrong with a good collar and a pad. Now you got you're saving your shoulders on your horse. Same thing. Uh, he, to, to tell people, I've seen a lot of people use collars that are cracked. You know what that's like. 
you know, that's going to pinch them, it's going to wear, you're going to have shoulder sores. I travel hundreds of miles with my mares, and that's number one, moving the collars. I didn't show you, but I'll show you tomorrow a collar that I used on my right hand mare. I was on the road, I've been on the road for a week, a week and a half. Um, she lost enough weight, so my I used 26 inch collars with a, with a heavy pad, um, so that takes up 20, I needed 24. The 24 got too big, and the collar dropped down on her, and she was starting to ruffle up her hair. I go to the camper, and I get one of my wife's bath towels and a duct tape. And I take that collar and I, and I fold it up that bath towel and I put it in the top of that collar sure. and I wrapped it with duct tape. Sure. And, and now it brought, brought it up on my shoulders. Yep. That's two years old now. It's still out there. I still use that <laughs> collar on that horse. <laughs> I had her find her a different collar uh, yesterday, when, a couple days ago, and I was going to haul one her on Sunday, I think it was, um, because that collar won't fit her because she's too fat right now. Um, so I just got a regular 26 inch collar with a pad on it, but it, as soon as I get her out and start making my miles, you know, I'll have to put that collar back on it, but I don't take it apart, but there's ways to fix it. You just got to know, know the sign before it hurts you, because if you're on a trip uh, figuring you're going to make 200 miles and you're 100 miles into it and you're in trouble, you, you best know how to fix it, <laughs> you know. This program is available for purchase. To 
order your copy, please call. This program is available to purchase. Three zero. To order your copy, please call. Or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly dedicated to draft animal farming. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming. It is published by Mishka Press. As well as other aspects, which also offers a complete line of back to the land. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back to the land. Subscription information, DVDs, and calendars. Or visit our website Call at right www.ruralheritage.com. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.